Mr. Mr. Large 2 that is large enough to create this game actually. I can just play this game and it does a pretty good job and it tells me that if I lose it. I mean this code is pretty much on the internet at this point but if this game is like zero shot works very well. I kind of like this model. Probably you may not like this model for one reason this model does not let you use for commercial purposes. So that's the take that they've taken. This new model which is uh, Mr. Large's elder brother. So Mr. Larry had something called Mr. Large. This is Mr. Large 2. So this is a model that uh, they have said large enough. In fact, it seems like it is large enough. So this model is a 128,000 context window model with 123 billion parameters. So if you see, we have got three classes of models, let's say. We have got SLMs, small language models, for me personally, anything that is like below 10 billion, that is like small language model, even though now you can argue what is small and anything that a uh, 10 billion to let's say 100 something that is like somewhere in the medium range, like Llama 70 billion, Llama 3.170 billion or the any 80 billion models that you see that is all somewhere in the medium range. And then you've got like large, large models, like it's like large square language models. Now this model, I'm not sure where to put this honestly, uh, to be honest, um, but what Mistral has said is that Mistral said that they have kept a single node inferencing in mind. Like very, let's say you're a company, you want to deploy this model, you want to serve this model to your user. Is it possible for you to put this in one single machine and then serve the model? So Mistral Large 2 is designed for single node inference with large context applications in mind. So at least there is a logic in which they have designed this number of parameters, uh, the model size. So I appreciate that there is some thought process going behind it. It's 128,000 context window and also does pretty good with multilingual capability. So it has got French, German, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, Arabic, Hindi, Russian, Chinese, Japanese and Korean and 80 plus programming language. So one thing I want to do with this model, which I'm not doing in this video is that try different programming languages other than Python. So I've been like pretty much trying a lot of uh, programming languages with Python. Recently, I spoke to somebody, they were like, oh, can I use this model for .NET? And I was like, I had a brain freeze moment to say, can you use it for .NET or not? And then I felt that it is so insane that I've tried all these models only on Python, hardly any other languages, some JavaScript, but probably I might try it with, uh, let's say PHP or some other language. I don't have a lot of understanding, but let's give a try. Now, this is a good language for both reasoning and also programming. I'm always pretty interested. So at some point I want to do either, you know, a very small analyst to say that, if a model is better in programming, is it better at reasoning? Because like in my mind, I'm like, okay, a kid who is better in math should be better in engineering. I mean, that is the bias that I come with. A kid who is better at math should be better in computer science or vice versa. So I don't know what is cause and effect. Like I'm in fact reading a book that is called somewhere it is there. And in fact, reading a book that is called book of why that is about cause and effect, causal inference and all this stuff. But generally I have this notion that if a large language is more, it's it's what it is, like it's what we believe it is. If it is not just a pure memorization engine, if it is not a pure parrot, then it should have some correlation between programming, reasoning, math, um, and all these things, unless like we are just like actually benchmark hacking. So if you have got time, do this. If probably are at some point, like I'll probably try to do this. We have got plenty of data at this point. All we have to do is run a little bit of Pearson correlation coefficient and then see what is the correlation coefficient at this point. The only challenge is like a lot of confounding factors. You've got a lot of different uh, data sets playing role, but let's see. Anyways, this model is supposed to be a coding and reasoning model on general performance, which they are measuring it based on MMLU. It achieves 84%, which is quite an upgrade from their previous model. The previous model, Mr. Large, had an 81.2% MMLU score and uh, this one has got 84%. The problem is, I'm, I don't I don't like MMLU. I mean, I think I've said it multiple times on this channel. In fact, like uh, there are a couple of papers that we have covered that MMLU is a completely screwed up metric. Like it's, it's not a metric that you should be ideally using um, just to measure intelligence. Then your measure of intelligence itself is completely flawed. So anyways, it's a me metric still a lot of CEOs love to tweet. So thank you CEO. Uh, it's not Mr. CEO in this case, a lot of CEOs, let's say. So they've got good score. Uh, and in terms of coding and reasoning, as you can see here, they're, they're trying to compare this model with Llama 3.170 billion. And their uh, argument is, okay, Llama 3.170 billion is here below 100 billion parameters. 
and uh, mistral large 2 is like above that so it offers like better um, response I'm still a little skeptical at this point. I love this model. Um, I don't want to sound like a skeptic, but it, you're comparing with a model that is like 40 billion parameter less and the Delta is like, doesn't seem huge. And the model just like came yesterday. I, I hope community would fine tune a lot and then improve it. While your model is not going to come with that opportunity because you know, there is a license that might let you modify uh, the model. Like probably you can release your fine tuning, but it's not like necessarily as same as what Llama um, 3.170 billion is doing. So it'll be interesting to see by the end of the week or the next week to see, okay, do we have coding specific Llama models that are like much better at this? But at this point, this is a good model. Uh, I've tested a couple of things. This is a good model. The model peaks at math performance. The model is okay with uh, the coding performance. So you can see it is almost on par with uh, the 405 billion parameter model and math, it just like beats the state of the art open source model in this case, the Llama 3.1405 billion parameter model, which is quite interesting. 120 billion parameter model beating a 405 billion parameter model on a specific uh, domain uh, task. So if have got a bunch of other evils available. So human evil is something that we saw Llama 3.1 model was not doing pretty great when you compare it with let's say Claude 3.5 Sonnet or a GPT 4.0. And you can see Mr. Large somewhere there uh, um, in the ballpark with the GPT 4.0 and it's like way above everybody else. It could be one of the reasons why it is pretty good with coding. I love Human Eval. Um, if you're following me, you know that I'm a big fan of Human Eval. So on other uh, programming related benchmarks as well, this model is pretty good. MBBP is a Python, basic Python test. Um, it's not as good as other models. And I'm, I'm okay, like we have got enough models for Python. But Human Eval is actually interesting. Like the way Human Eval is, GPT-40, Mr. Large 2, having an open weights model, let's say not a commercial license model, but still like it's it's weights, like it's literally PyTorch weights or safe tensors that you can download and use it. And uh, with that with that score, I think it's pretty interesting. We are living in a pretty interesting time. And if you see the programming average score, so you've got Mr. Large 2, Mr. Large 1, Llama 3.1405, uh, Llama 3.1405 from paper and what they measured. There is some delta, which is surprising and uh, Llama 3.170 uh, billion and GPT-40. So GPT-40 is still the king. Um, people might have different opinion based on uh, a lot of different factors. And also, as a matter of fact, they have not added Claude here. So even though Claude is here, they've not added Claude here. But the vibe, uh, if you see the internet, Claude 3.5 Sonnet is like absolutely crushing in programming, um, whether you use it with Artifact or not. So. Take, take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, GPT-40 is good, but I'm not sure if it is the best in terms of what people want, but uh, this looks like a good enough model for that. Java, it beats everybody. Uh, it is not as good as uh, other models in all the programming languages, but when you average, this is literally the best open weights uh, next to GPT-40. And uh, still, I would have loved to see Claude 3.5 Sonnet here, but maybe it's not as good as this. N no, I think it is a lot better than uh, Mr. Large 2, Claude 3.5 Sonnet is like a lot better. So they have not included it here, but at some point I want to do a comparison. On math, you can see GSM 8K, 8 short. This is like just closer to 405. So that is pretty impressive for a model that is like four times smaller, four times, let's say three ish times, 3.5 ish times smaller. And uh, it's it's on the ballpark. That is pre pretty in um, interesting. Math instruct, uh, zero short, no COT. There is no chain of thought and zero short. It is a pretty good result. Recently, I covered IMO, uh, Artificial Intelligence Math Olympiad. We discussed about the first result, the winning prize, but also there was a second or third one where they did not fine tune any model. In fact, they just used a bunch of prompt engineering and clever techniques to act a tool usage to come up with the second prize. I was pretty interested in the solution. I might probably discuss that solution at some point. So this kind of model might be extremely helpful for those kind of use cases where you don't want to fine tune, you want a better result out of box, uh, let's say um, math. And this could be helpful in, uh, let's say for education, teaching. And at some point I want to see these models also uh, driving solutions, like not just, uh, let's say you give me an answer, can it solve an equation that is uh, not just like a book equation, but um, that is for some other day. Instruction following seems to be good. And uh, in terms of language diversity is where this model makes a huge, 
huge difference. The multilingual capability of this model is top notch. And uh, as you can see here, it scores pretty good on multilingual MMLU. There are multiple languages where this model is absolutely insane. And uh, it's again, it's uh, it is on par with, uh, let's say, Llama 3 uh, 70 billion parameter model and uh, Llama 3, sorry, Llama 3 405 billion parameter model on tool usage or function calling. This is better. The problem for me with tool usage or function calling is like at this point, Mistral is using a slightly weird setup for you to enable tool calling. I don't think like there is a standardized way for you to easily enable tool calling. That's probably an opportunity for a lot of YC companies there and probably a lot of open source projects. I think Llama is trying to put it together. They have got a repo. If you have watched my video yesterday, you know that Llama tool chain is a repo where uh, they're trying to standardize it. I would love some standardization here, not, not standardization like what OpenAI does, but somewhere here. So that is quite interesting. Overall, this is a decent model. Um, and um, I would say it's a, I'm sorry, when I say decent model, I'm not trying to be rude. Uh, it is a good model. It is a good model, but when you, take the grand scheme of things. This is a decent model. This is a model that you can host on a single node and then use it, but you cannot use it for commercial purpose. So Mistral is offering you this model as part of their um, existing toolkit, La, La Platform A, and also you can uh, use it as part of Google Vertex AI. And man, Vertex AI is like a big pain to work with. Um, if, <laughs> if you are using Vertex AI in production, I have a massive respect for you. Azure AI Studio is interesting. Amazon Bedrock, um, I've uh, I've used it at my work as well, like IBM Watson X AI. There are other places where this is coming, and I have a feeling that uh, th they will make it easier for people to fine tune it. If you want to try out this model today, you can just go try out this model on uh, Hugging Faces. Sorry, uh, <laughs> Mistral's chat platform. You can just go here, click a new chat and uh, you can select the large model, the top reasoning capability model. I tested a code that is like quite popular, the question, which one is bigger, 9.11 or a 9.9? .9. And these models are trained with a lot of version numbers, so the model always thinks that 9.11 is bigger. One, it has got two digits, like after decimal point, you've got two digits. And if you know how these models work, they basically tokenize and all these things. So we know the challenge of this question, but zero shot. We got the best answer. I'm not sure if they included this specifically in the training data. I'm not sure. I don't have that insider information, but this is impressive. Like the moment I saw this, I was like mind blown. So I wanted to give a different number just to make sure that it is not part of training data. Exact same question. Which one is bigger 9.567 or some random number, but 9.2 and it gets the right answer. And it gives me the right reasoning as well. And uh, it, that's why I feel like maybe they specifically train for this. But then I asked a snake code. That's uh, that's pretty bad on my side. I just said, give me snake code. I thought like it might understand that I want a snake game. Um, but yeah, it's a poor human mistake. So it gave me just a simple code. It doesn't uh, tell me anything about snake. Then I said, I want a snake game. Then it give me with something called curses. I said like, just don't do that. Give me with Pi game. So it gave me with Pi game and that is a code that I actually put it on my Visual Studio code and uh, zero shot, just pasted the code, then ran it and I got it. Like it, it seems cool. Um, and uh, you can just go here. The game looks cool I, uh, or at least like uh, at some point I want to make a video where we just make snake games uh, using all the models and then see how it performs. But the fact that it, it managed to do that is uh, quite good for me at this point. Um, and uh, I want to do one live check. So I'm going to start a new chat here. I'm going to say, give me a Pi game code to play hangman. That's it. All I'm going to give is this a very basic prompt. And I want to also see how good it does when you compare it with, let's say, Claude 3.5 artifacts. So probably integrating the, uh, taking some code of this and running it on code gen would give me some kind of idea. So it gives me words to guess. And uh, I'm pretty interested in uh, what kind of, um, let's say, graphics it uses. But as you can see, it already started making mistake. It assumes that I've got hangman 0.png, hangman 1.png. This is one of the problem when you steal code from the internet. As a programmer, whenever I, I teach programming to a lot of people. They just go to Stack Overflow, copy it. And then you see these kind of file paths and people just run it and then feel that, oh, uh, it's not working fine for me. I mean, of course it will not work fine for you, right? Because why would it work? You need these images. So let's just for the sake of making it happy, we are running this game. And ideally, I guess we might have, uh, yeah, uh, there is no hangman zero. Cool. 
so at, at okay there there is a potential to try out a lot more coding but i wanted to also show you the good side and bad side and let you make the decision what do you feel about this model let me know in the comment section otherwise uh, thanks to mistral for once again making it open weights even though it's not commercial license i hope the company makes enough money for us to get more commercially available models i'm happy that this model exists see you on the video happy prompting